What's up YouTube? It's another video from Rico and the Source Financia vlog, as DJ Khaled would say, another, another one. one. In this video, um, we're going to be talking about the importance of building Guangxi in China and how to do it. So Guangxi, first of all, I, I'm not sure if I've talked about this specifically on the YouTube channel, but I've definitely talked about it on my podcast. And actually, I released a, an episode recently called um, Leveraging Your Guangxi to Build Business in China to you know, for Business in China with Michael Michelini. It was episode 62 of the Made in China podcast. There'll be a link in the description below. Um, and before I actually jump into the episode, I actually wanted to thank you guys because we just hit, I believe we just hit 160 subscribers. I actually wanted to make a video about that like a while ago, but you know, I'm so happy that the uh, YouTube channel is growing. I know 160 isn't that much, but like considering that we were at something like 30, <laughs> 20 subscribers at the beginning of the year, like getting to 160 is, um, it's, it's good. It's good and we're growing steady. And actually uh, the day in the life, day one video, um, that has 1,600 views. So it's our most viewed video and I'm, it's all thanks to you guys. So I just, as long as we keep on getting subscribers, as long as um, I keep getting people watching the videos, um, I'm gonna continue making them, all right? So yeah, Guangxi specifically, uh, can tra it translates to a lot of different things, but it basically means your network. It's a, it, maybe the literal translation would be, who do you know? So your Guangxi is, is who you know. Um, it's an important, important aspect of doing business in China because a lot of business in China, and I think not just China, but Asian culture involves relationships. It, it involves <clears throat> less so, you know, sort of, hey, let me do research online and find this person and, you know, look at the customer reviews. It's more about, hey, let me ask my friend if my friend knows somebody who can do this or I'd rather work with, you know, my family or my cousin or my, my brother's wife's you know, cousin's dog and then, then work with, you know, some random person that walks into into my store and tries to sell me something. So, I mean, uh, simple things. Like if you go to the market, for example, you might go to a market in Guangzhou. Uh, let's say the market at Guangzhou Railway Station is a, this is a huge market there for textiles. You can buy anything from fake Dolce & Gabbana, you know, suits to fake Armani underwear, whatever you like perfume, everything is there. So you, you go there, you go into a store, you know, let's say you see the, the, the fake Armani uh, or fake Dolce Gabbana, you know, suit and you're like, I, I want this. And then you start, you try it on, slightly small, they don't have the next size, right? But they'll say, okay, we don't have the next size right now, but we can bring it to you in like a day. And what that means is they're going to go and find somebody else who has <laughs> the next size of that suit. Uh, I mean, sometimes they're just going to go to get it from their warehouse or their, their factory. Um, you know, maybe they might even make it custom for you. But a lot of times, especially if they're able to do it in a very short space of time, a lot of times they're just going to go and find somebody else who's producing the same product or selling the same product. Or maybe they already know somebody who's producing the same product. And they'll say, hey, by the way, okay, we're going to buy it. We have this guy, he's a client. He wants this size in this, in this uh, suit. Um, we're charging him $300. Or two hundred dollars, and you know we'll pay you, you know, one hundred and fifty, and then we'll take fifty. Because I mean, they still make some money from that situation, even though they're not the ones technically um, who who produce the, the product. But that's the way it works. They'd rather work with somebody else and, and profit together than sort of work with strangers or be selfish. So that's the way. Just that it, it just works here in China. And the same thing with when it comes to manufacturers and things like that, like. If you are a factory and a client comes to you and they say, can you make this product? It might be similar to something that you made before, but it's not exactly the same. You're going to say, yes, we can make this product. And then you're going to go talk to one of your manufacturing partners that you worked with in the past and outsource that labor or work together to produce the product. So, and then a lot of times they'll actually tell them that the other manufacturers will say, by the way, like, look, 
we're buddies. You know, if somebody comes to you and they, they're looking to make, you know, an iPhone cover, we specialize in iPhone covers, you guys specialize in Samsung, you know, let's, why not just outsource it to us? Like, and that's just the way it works, right? Like, so a lot of the relationship, a lot of the business in China is relationship based. So Guangxi is that, who do you know? And the more Guangxi you have, the more successful you're going to be because if somebody approaches me and I have connections to multiple different things, I could be a, a, I'm a very important person because I can basically help you do anything. If I know somebody in the government who can help you, um, you know, set up your business faster, if I know a manufacturer that can make the exact specific product that you're looking for at a, at a reasonable price and they're not listed on Alibaba, so like, you know, I have a competitive advantage there and you, if, with you working with them. Um, if I know even simple things, I just like if I know where the, where is the best office in Guangzhou that is reasonably reasonably priced, like those kind of things, you spending an extended period of time in China and developing those the things that you know, the people that you know, the the sort of connections that you make, you it ultimately makes you a more valuable person when it comes to doing business in China. So. So that's basically, you know, the importance of it. Like, how do you build it? How do you build it, I think, is, is it, there's two parts to it. It takes time. I think it takes a lot of time to build Guangxi in China because, you know, you have to be here. You there's, it, In order to be put into certain places, certain rooms, uh, to meet certain people, you have to be here for some time. And, um, you know, all it takes is meeting one person who then leads you to meeting a group of other people and then it kind of expands from there. I think it's a little bit easier as a foreigner, to be honest, to make these connections because there's an inherent um, sort of fascination, whatever you want to call it, with you know f people that are different from you and your culture. And it's just easier. It's like I, 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 go, I go to factories all the time. I get invited by factory bosses to go have dinner and, and things like that. Like. Sometimes they don't even care if, like, sometimes they don't even care if I'm necessarily going to work with them in the future. It's more just they kind of just want to hang out with me and, and get to know me and ask me about my life and, you know, women have dated, whatever. They just want to know kind of what the foreign experience is like. And then also you being a foreigner that lives in China makes you like even more interesting. So um, I, it is a little bit easier when you're a foreigner. You, I think you can build the Guangxi a little bit faster, but I think that it takes time. It takes time. The longer you're here, the more patient you are, the more people you meet, the more connections you make, the, the easier it's going to be. But you're also going to have to go for a lot of like seemingly meaningless dinners. Like I have Chinese friends that are now very valuable assets uh, in my life and I think I'm valuable to them as well. But I mean, in the beginning, I mean, it was cool for me because in the beginning I was just like, oh, I'm in China, this is fun. In the beginning, we were going for a lot of dinners, just a lot of dinners, a lot of dinners, and we're not really doing anything at those dinners. It's not very productive. And, and I think with a Western business mindset, it can be a little bit frustrating. You kind of feel like you're wasting time going for these meaningless dinners when you could be like in the office or you could be doing something else that's maybe a little bit more productive um, with your time. But it does add up. Like over time when they hang out with you and they kind of see that you're consistently this person and you present yourself in a, in a way that they feel that they can trust, then you start to see these business opportunities open up. You start to see them offering you little, you know, ideas and things like that. Like, I mean, one of my, one of my good Chinese friends that I've been, I've known for three years now, um, you know, he's in the past two years, I've just noticed like the opportunities that he's presenting me are maybe even a little bit more tailor-made to my, my abilities, like my, um, my specialities. You know, maybe in the beginning he would mention things that were kind of a little bit more generic, but now that he knows me better and he knows what I'm willing to do, what I'm not willing to do, he's presenting me with opportunities that are, you know, more around what I like to do. So that took time. It took three years to get to that stage. And also at the same time, I can now leverage my relationship with him to get connections to certain people that I might not be able to meet on a regular basis or people that people or businesses or people that I can't just go and Google or the Chinese equivalent which is Baidu and and you know find those people so it takes time um, and then also just take every take every opportunity that you have 
to at the, especially at the beginning, like when you're you're coming for the first time. If you're coming to China just to visit, or you're gonna your your first three to six months in China, I'll say take every opportunity you have to network. So if there's events that you can attend, um, if there's WeChat groups that you know have groups of a bunch of like 200 people, foreigners, Chinese, and they're holding meetups or they're communicating. Try to make connections with those groups because it works out down the line. Like I'll give you an example with me. Even certain situations that you think are not really that important, like things that you might do, where you think, ah, what am I going to get out of this? I'm just doing this to get to this place. A good example of that would be a lot of times people take certain don't take certain jobs very seriously, like teaching English in China. <laughs> I know a lot of people that taught English in China that it was just a means to an end. Like they're just making money, and you know they just put in like 50% of their effort and. You know, they still made quite a bit of money at the end of the day, so it didn't really matter. Whereas, like for me, when I taught English, I took it very seriously. I wanted to be the best English teacher I could possibly be, and that worked for me because I ended up, even though I only worked at the school, I worked at the school for eight months total. But my first three months, eight months per year, my first three months at the school, they named me Teacher of the Year, and I was like, I've been here for three months. But I think that is something that is more to do with the way I approach anything that I do. Is I want to be the best at it. So I remember, you know, taking the time to get to know every student and try to establish a personal connection with them. Try to bring uh, my own ideas to the classes. Try to keep it fresh. Try to keep it interesting. Um, show up and work on time, if not early. Um, sometimes I'd leave a little bit later. You know, just like just getting to know everybody, being cordial, like just just the the, the little things that you do, just that extra 10% of effort, it goes a long way. So I met I actually met the Chinese guy that I, I was talking about that I've known for three years. I met him while I was teaching English. Um, my first three, my first six employees came from my English teaching school. My uh, my first two, three and interns, unpaid interns, <laughs> came from from me teaching English. So. You know, just being in those situations, you might think that just I'm teaching English, I'm just making money, just so I can go to this next step in my life. But these are opportunities where you're building Guangxi, you're working for a Chinese company. There are successful Chinese people that own English teaching schools, people that have been successful in other industries besides English. So you have to take those opportunities. It, it might not present itself as an opportunity, but you have to you have to take those opportunities. So.、Um, Yeah, I think that's the importance of Guangxi is being able to leverage your relationships to get things done faster, to、um, get better, bigger business opportunities. Important takeaways, I think, is that it takes time to build it.、Um, I think that you, you're also going to be in certain situations where it feels like a waste of time, and you don't want to necessarily go go through with it, but go through with it. And just put your best foot forward every single time you do something. Every time, every time you're in a, you're going for the the, the random dinner where you think nothing's gonna. Just go there and have fun. Be social. Be cordial.、Um, you don't have to, you know, drink all the time with them, or you don't have to spend six hours with them or anything like that. But just even if you're gonna be there for an hour, make that hour. Be present in that hour, and you know, make them know that you appreciate being with them and 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 build that relationship forward. Um, I think Guangxi is extremely important when it comes to doing business in China, and I think business in general. But like really, when it comes to do business in China, doing business in China, Guangxi is is almost a make or break situation. All right. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked it, please leave a comment below. I try to respond to every single comment, questions, anything like that. Um, and also subscribe, share it with people that might enjoy it, and I'll、uh, check you out next week.